Hey everybody, how's it going? Today I'd like to discuss the Massachusetts Automotive Right to Repair Bill from last year, it potentially getting overturned on a technicality, and why I think we may be very close to a new Tea Party. So this is a Massachusetts Question 1 Right to Repair Law Vehicle Data Access Requirement Initiative. I spent a lot of time last year talking about this. The absolute too long didn't read is that in 2012, Massachusetts passed an Odom Auto of Right to Repair Bill so that an independent mechanic would still be able to work on your car, get access to the diagnostic and troubleshooting codes so they could fix what's wrong with your vehicle. This way, you would not be stuck going back to the dealer every time you had a check engine light come on. Now, this law, it had an exemption in it for wireless data. So what happens when cars start doing more and more of their diagnostics and data transfer wirelessly rather than wired? Well, it means that, in this case, that would mean that your independent mechanic would be screwed. If they're doing all of the diagnostics wirelessly going into the future, and he only has access to tools that allow him to talk to the car wired, well, um, shit out of luck, you gotta go to the dealer. So this bill was passed to remedy that problem and close that loophole. And as you can see, it had overwhelming support. 75% in favor, 25% said no. So three quarters of the voting population said, yes, I want independence to be able to fix my car. Now, I talked about a lot of the bad faith arguments that were made regarding this bill last year. I covered it in detail. Here you have a woman in a parking lot. She's walking over to her vehicle, and uh, it's in a dark parking lot. There's no other cars there. There's no people there. There's scary music playing. And when you get very, very close as they're zooming in on the woman, right as she turns around, it sounds like they hit her with something. It's complete fear-mongering. The idea that if an independent mechanic works on your car, you will be raped in a parking lot. They are not hiding the ball here at all. That is what they are implying will happen. And I said this is ridiculous. And it was ridiculous. Ridiculous. And as you could see here, a few months later, it, it, they, they lost, you know, right to repair one, 75 to 25, overwhelming landslide. And then as I covered here, the car manufacturers are fighting right to repair. They are trying to sue to undo it after it was voted into law. And there's a reason that I'm going to bring this up now, even though I brought it up a few months ago. So here it says, a lawsuit filed by OEM Trade Group Alliance for Automotive Innovation against Massachusetts right to repair law is in court, according to a release from the Auto Care Association. The law, which state voters approved last fall by a margin of 75 to 25 percent, gives car owners access to in-vehicle data in real time, allows them to have their vehicle repaired at the shop of their choice, the release says. The lawsuit seeks to overturn the law based on cybersecurity concerns, insufficient time to comply with the new data access requirements, and automakers' contention of the ballot initiatives preempted by federal law. The Auto Care Association says in the release that no matter the result of the lawsuit, that it will continue to campaign for the right to repair. If there is a new law that comes out, and you say, I don't think I can comply in time. Do judges and lawmakers go, oh, I'm so sorry that we passed that. We weren't considering you. Okay, we'll throw it out. No, you get fined if you're not in violation with the law. This is not how this works when it comes to ordinary, average, everyday people. But somehow, this is how it works when it comes to Toyota, Honda, Ford, Nissan, and General Motors, all of whom spent millions upon millions of dollars contributing to the coalition that released these commercials that said that if right to repair passes, that you'll be raped in a parking lot. They tried to get this passed through the state legislature, and the politicians overwhelmingly ignored them. So they said, okay, fine. We'll get a pass-through ballot initiative. We'll jump through all the hoops necessary to get this pass-through ballot initiative. They spent $24 million on a campaign because ballot campaigns are not cheap. They got it, you know, they, they dealt with the language via the state's attorney general. They did all the work that they were supposed to do, and it got passed overwhelmingly. They got hundreds of thousands of signatures, and they were able to get it passed 75 to 25. So it gets passed. And now it may get thrown out by a judge because of a technicality. Oh, we may not. Yeah, you want us to comply by 2022? We can't do that. How are we supposed to comply with a law by 2022 that got passed in 2020? You have only given us a year and a half, two years. You've only given us two years to allow independence to be able to access the diagnostic data coming out of the vehicle. How could we possibly give independence access in two years? Listen, this law is inconvenient for us. It's really inconvenient. Can you just throw it away? Now, the reason I bring this up is because there's about 30 days until we get a decision on this, and there's good reason to believe that a judge actually throws this out after 75% of the population voted in favor of it, because the automakers are, are angry and salty. And this is a microcosm of what's wrong with our country. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're a Democrat, a Libertarian, a Republican, uh, you know, a, a, um, a Tea Party Republican, a Social Democrat, Virtually all groups of people in this country can sh be united and shake hands on the fact that they don't want to get their car fixed at the dealer because the dealer rips them off. 
They want the ability to choose who works on their car. They don't want the person who they want to work on their car locked out of it because they don't get access to the device that they paid for. As the commercial said last year for right to repair, it's your car, it's your data. And if your car has data after you paid thirty or forty or sixty thousand dollars for that car, you bet your ass that you should be allowed to have whoever you want access that data that's being stored in the vehicle that you fucking paid for. And if you're able to go through the legislature and get ignored, if you can go through the ballot process, all for it to get tossed out by a judge because someone at Ford or GM is salty that they actually have to do some work that may lead to an independent making money on repair instead of them, what are we doing? What are we doing? You can't get it through the legislative process because your politicians ignore you. You can't get it done through the ballot process because it gets overturned by a judge. Like, I, I don't see how you move forward here without tossing a bunch of tea into a river, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, and this is, this is what, it, it's, it's been done before in Massachusetts. And, you know, I really, I don't see a way forward here. This is a microcosm of what is wrong with our society, where you can have people from all sides of the political aisle come together in majority agreement on an issue and get absolutely no progress. I'm curious what you guys think in the comments down below. Because again, we are going to hear on this in 30 days. We are going to hear on this in 30 days, with, within 30 days, if this gets thrown out after all the work, time and effort, years of blood, sweat and tears and money that went into this campaign and went into all of this work being done, getting tossed out. I'm really curious. Do you think this is a good thing that there are that many checks and balances? Or do you think that when the overwhelming will of the American people on all sides of the political aisle can get thrown out like that, that there is a serious problem with the way that we deal with politics in this country? You let me know what you think in the comments down below. Uh, that's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now. And I really hope in the next 30 days that this does not get thrown out. Because if this does get thrown out, this means that normal, average, everyday people have zero say in anything when it comes to our society, but GM, Ford, Toyota, Nissan, and Honda do. And that would be some bullshit. I really do believe that this is a nonpartisan issue. Whether you're a Bernie bro driving a Prius or whether you are a Trump voter driving a MAGA truck Silverado, I don't think that this is an issue that is partisan. I think that people across all sides of the political aisle could come together and say, I want to choose who fixes my own car, regardless of who we vote for, regardless of what we think about social issues, economic issues, everything else. I want to choose who fixes my car. And it's really telling that on an issue that has so much bipartisan support and approval that it could still get held up by these types of technicalities and actually have a really good chance 30 days from now from just being tossed out like nothing ever happened. That's not going to be good for society one bit. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.